Hey, hey, what's up guys? So I'm gonna be continuing my 3D Max to Maya tutorials. And today we're just gonna talk about things that are a little bit more complex than last time. Last time we were just getting comfortable with hotkeys and familiarizing ourselves with the uh, interface a little bit. So today we're gonna get a little bit deeper. And I kind of realized that like, it's been nine months since my first tutorial. So if you were actually like following along since the first one, I feel really sorry that, um, you know, we're, we're only we're only on like duplicating objects like nine months later so hopefully this will still be useful for someone down the road so uh let's move on so the first thing to know about maya's interface is that it kind of changes buttons based on this drop down menu here it changes context depending on the context so if we're doing modeling you'll have a slightly few more options than if you're doing rigging or animation uh, etc so Let's just leave it on modeling for now because that's probably the most common for starting. The other thing is that the background of the viewport is slightly brighter by default than 3D Max. If you don't like working with this brighter interface and this just feels alien to you, you can always change it by going to Windows, Settings, and Color Settings, and then Background Color right here. So you can change it to like bright yellow and be like, yeah, I'm from the future. This is how we model. But if you don't want to lose your eyesight, you can just set that back by going to the same thing. Color settings and then reset the default. So in this series of tutorials, I'm trying to make as many comparisons to 3D Max as possible, just so you can kind of see how things are a little bit different. So for starters, uh, you know, depending on your keybinds, uh, W, E, R are the normal transform tools that you're used to for moving things around, scaling and rotating. Right, so that's what I'll be using for most of this. Uh, right off the bat, I'll just give you one. So control D is to copy, right? So let's say I was to copy this cube, I'd hit control D. Let me just move it a little bit. Maybe do a little bit of rotate. And if you hit shift D and continue hitting shift D, it'll just duplicate that over and over. Very much like Max where you can just hold shift and you can choose whether it's a copy or an instance. You can do the same thing in Maya. So let me just get rid of these boxes. And if you go to edit, duplicate, or duplicate special, you can specify whether you're making a copy or an instance. So let's say I make an instance. Obviously, you know what's gonna happen. If I have an instance, it'll affect both objects, right? So that's how we do it, just control D. Next up is snapping. So snapping is a little bit different. Uh, Keybind inside of Maya. You use these buttons up here, which each have their own shortcut, um, but they're actually almost nicer than Max somehow. So. In Max, you're used to using the snap. You can turn on the snap. You toggle snapping by holding S, right? And you can modify that by right-clicking and switching to grid points, pivot, all that kind of stuff. But for example, inside of Maya, if you hold down the V key, you can snap to points, so other verts. Uh, if you hold down the X key, this is actually a snap to grid, so it's snapping across the grid down at the, along the bottom. And really nice in Maya is if you hold down D, it affects the pivot. So this little yellow dot is the pivot. And then while holding D, I can continue to hold the other snap key. So I could hold down V. Now I can snap the uh, the pivot to say the corner. So I'm holding down D and V. And now my pivot is on the corner. So it's a really easy way to manipulate the, uh, the pivot by holding the D key. The next thing is I want to mention like the very nature of getting into sub objects. So inside of 3D Max, you're used to, you know, let's say, let's, let's just start this over. So let's say I make a box inside of Max and in order to manipulate it, you either have to add an edit poly modifier or you have to right click and convert to edit poly like that. And then you can start selecting your verts, edges and faces, etc. right? So you have to do that extra step inside of Maya though. All you have to do is if you have, I mean, if you hit set up hotkeys, you can do it the way I'm about to do it, or you can right click and hit the context menu. But inside of Maya, all you have to do is you can just, you don't have to add anything. There's no modifier system. There's no modifier system that requires you to add anything. You can just start manipulating it right away. So that's actually really nice. And it's also very smooth inside of Maya. I don't know how to explain it, but Maya is actually, it does feel more comfortable in many ways. The, uh, the interface is less snappy. It's less uh, unpredictable. It's kind of smoother experience. Next up is just how we subdivide. So in Max, you're used to using Turbo Smooth, right? So I'd throw on a Turbo Smooth on top of this Edit Poly, and I'd throw out the iterations, and that's how we do it, right? But inside of Maya, uh, as I mentioned before, there's the mesh previews. So these are previews. So if I hit 
my keybind here and I preview this mesh, this isn't actually subdivided. This is just showing you what it would look like if I were to subdivide. So it's very similar to 3D Max, how you can have a turbo smooth on top of an edit poly. But let's say I go below the turbo smooth and I still want to see what it looks like if I were to manipulate this mesh. So I can have these verts and then I'd have a show preview, right? So it's kind of like that, but you don't have the modifier system. So in order to actually subdivide your mesh, there's a few ways to do it. You can uh, shift right click and go to smooth. And as you can see here, you can set the subdivisions. So I can set it to two, right? Or I can have the cube, I can have my mesh preview. And actually it's slightly different kind of subdivision, but if you go to modify, convert, smooth mesh preview to polygons, that's another way to subdivide it. So now I can't go back to the cube that I had because I've actually subdivided it now. The idea of history in Maya is a little bit different to Max. Um, we usually, we have, we have the benefit of the modifiers. So if I do something, let's say I want to just experiment inside of Max, I'll throw up another edit poly on top of something, right? And I'll just completely screw this up. Um, but that's kind of, that's good because then I can just experiment. And then, you know, if I don't like what I did, I'll just delete it. And I just go back to my, uh, previous model. So it's the modifier stacks actually kind of act as a sort of history. Well, in Maya, it's a little bit different, but kind of the same. You have this input history here. So all these things, these, these are all the steps that my object has gone through its history. So if I increase stuff like this, you can see it affects the base shape. But the problem with that is that as you get further into your, uh, modifying your object, things start to glitch out a little bit. And over time, you're going to actually want to start clearing that history. So the way to do that inside of my is that you have to get used to going to edit, delete by type and deleting history. So take a look at these inputs on the right. These are all going to get deleted when I clear this. All right. So if you have issues with your mesh, if you start finding that there's problems, deleting your history is a good, is probably one of the better solutions. Like when you start doing like symmetry and all that kind of stuff, uh, the best thing to describe it is exact same thing as using an X form, a reset X form inside of 3d max. So let's say I've turbo smooth this ball and I don't want, I can always collapse it. And then I could edit poly again. And then I could reset X form reset selected and then collapse everything. So all that history is gone, right? This is no longer a square. This is a new object with the reset X form. So it's kind of the same thing. So just get comfortable with the idea that there's no reset X form inside of Maya, but instead we delete our history to reduce problems. One of the most challenging things that I, even now I still miss from ha from 3D Max is having this channel box down here where you can, you know, X, Y, Z. It's just so easy to manipulate objects in space. And I actually think that that's partly why. I could see why architectural visualization uses 3D Max still, because I just find the measurement system is just a little bit nicer inside of Max. So inside of Maya, you have something similar. This is called the channel box, where you have pretty much the same thing, except you've got, you know, the rotate and scale there as well. So it's pretty much the same thing. Visibility on and off can uh, be selected here. The other thing that's similar to Maya, and I think Max kind of adopted this from Maya, is the idea of this outliner. So you can select that right here. And inside of Maya, this is really neat. So let's say I duplicate this object, everything, every object will be inside the outliner. So when things get really crazy and you have like a billion objects inside, you can always use your outliner to easily select things that you can't necessarily click inside your viewport.